Nothing will find its meaning. No nation will find her meaning except we are in consultation with him. There is a reason for which he decided to create South Africa. And as long as we do not climb into his realm to find out, oh, we are going to be many things, but nothing from his perspective. Because the Bible says, without him, you can do, but your doing will be equal to nothing. I know you can do. You can go through the motions, but it's nothing. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. This is speaking about the messianic anointing. The manifestation of that spirit that will be upon him will be in wisdom and understanding. That's the first combo. And I don't want to explain the combo. Apostle Dabs, this is the scripture that most African theologians read and call the seven spirits of God. And that's not true. There's something called the seven spirit of God, but it's not this. Because this is fruit coming out of the concentrated messianic anointing that is placed on the life of Jesus. Are you there? So there's a combo. The first combo is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. I don't have time to explain these things. Maybe if the Lord permits tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. Second combo, the spirit of counsel and might. See, this first combo, second what? Combo. The third combo is the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. It is one spirit that was poured upon him, but the fruit the spirit produced is in the likeness of the combos that I just mentioned. Next verse. When all of these three combos are at work, this is the result, verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding. Stop. Those of you with electronic Bibles equipped with a lexicon, I'd like you to click on quick. What's the Hebrew word there? Someone help me, please. Because if, if, if I say it, you say, the man from Nigeria came with his own thing. So I will not open my own Bible. What, what, what have you found? Ruach. What does Ruach mean? Yes, it means spirit. But it's, there's something deeper than that. It means breath. Now listen. Are you with me? Or you are not with me? Do you realize that when man was created, Jesus, Jehovah Elohim, that's the pre-incarnate name for Jesus, he was the one that did the modeling. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, we have, in the beginning, Elohim, that's the council of the Godhead. Are you there? I said, are you there? In Genesis chapter 2, we see a member of the Godhead steps out of the quadrant of the Godhead to mold something. And after molding man, the Bible says he breath into his nostrils the breath of life. And that first breath that he released on man made man a living soul, conscious in the seat of his soul. His consciousness was soul bound. His consciousness was intellectual, emotional, and his capacity to make choices. That was the state of civilization he sustained on the strength of the first breath. Are you still with me? The same Jesus, Jehovah Elohim, when he rose from the dead, in the book of John chapter 20, was with his disciples. And he told them something. He says, as 
the Father has sent me, so send I you. So we now have an opportunity to know how he was sent from heaven because he's about to demonstrate it. Before the Father sent him from heaven, the Father called him and breathed upon him. So the Father breathed himself as the Spirit into Jesus. Jesus breathed himself as the Spirit into the church. So Jesus lived his Father because Jesus did not do anything that was his preference. He did everything that was his Father's preference because the Spirit of his Father was in him. In the same way, Jesus is expecting you not to do what you want, but to do what his Spirit in your heart prompts you to do. Meanwhile, that's the second breath. Man was going to live by breath, God's breath. You see, the first breath brought him into mental alertness. If you go to China, the skyscrapers you will see just from the first breath. Just on the strength of the first breath. And that's why the richest man in the world doesn't need to be a Christian. Because he's functioning on the resources of the first breath. And that first breath still carries the DNA of dominion. Are you there? So he now gives us the second breath in John 20. <sighs> Receive ye the Holy Spirit. It means that he has released us into another dimension. So the way you evaluate our lives will be different from the way you evaluate someone that has the first roak. Oh, you're not with me. I'm still talking dimensions. On the day of Pentecost, this Jehovah Elohim, Jesus Christ, he had ascended into heaven. Is that true? You will notice that before they began to speak in tongues in the upper room, the Bible says there was a rushing mighty wind that came from heaven. It was Ruach from heaven. Jesus again. That was what produced the day of Pentecost. So what we call Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost dimensions, the gifts of the Spirit, it came from a, a breath. But he had to go into heaven before he released that breath. The third dimension. You know there are prayers that we pray from earth to heaven. And there are prayers that we pray from heaven to earth. Because in your current reality, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and plans. You can pray from that reality. I, I'm just talking dimensions. So the Bible says, He shall make him of Ruach understanding. Stay. Stay. What is the implication? What is the implication that results when he makes you of Ruach understanding? And Ruach understanding means he breathes upon you. And as he's doing that, his breath now activates your spiritual senses and brings you into an understanding that you cannot find in the library. When you receive Ruach understanding in the fear of the Lord, the first implication is that you will not judge after the sight of your eyes. So Ruach understanding is a superior manifestation of senses that can substitute your physical senses. But only men that trust that dimension can leave this dimension to go so that they will hold on to the dimension that is accessible when he releases Ruach into your spirit. You will no longer judge after the sight of your eyes. If, if, 
uh, it will interest you to know that the scripture says that if the only sight you have is what your eyes give you then you are blind so he wants us to operate from another dimension entirely when you look at the nation you don't analyze it after the dialect of the local politics and who is uh, <laughs> all the political parties <laughs> Those are orchestrations. Those are, those are manifestations. But your own perception should come because there's ruach understanding. You can afford to despise the things that you have seen by the sight of your eyes. You can afford to despise the things that you have seen by the hearing of your ears. If you can successfully despise the judgment that comes through your sight and the understanding that comes through your ears that's when you qualify to wage war with righteousness you become a different entity entirely just because your reality is hooked on to the consciousness that the Holy Spirit brings into your verse if you are still with me say amen At this point, I'm supposed to digress. According to the script, I'm supposed to digress and show you your spiritual senses, how they work. But I think we, we, we may need to jump that. Because when you know how this, your spiritual senses work, then I can now take you to the dimension that Apostle invited us here to consider. Because when your, your entry point is that the Holy Spirit will activate your spiritual sense is through ruach and then you now enter into that position where you can understand things because the things in heaven are not things you have been taught about they are not things you can read a book and know see when you are brought into ruach understanding you can begin to understand things that you were not taught you can begin to know things that you never learned there is no way, and this Ruach understanding, if you are a lawyer here, Ruach understanding can give you an edge beyond what you learned from law school. You do business. Ruach understanding can give you insight into future trends so that you know what choices to make that will make you strategic and take you. You see, you, oh my God, if you know what I'm talking about then it is possible that the people in this room in the next few years will manifest products results that cannot be understood from any any all right because you are not following I can feel that you are following me now so uh, let me restore the part of the syllabus that I <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah <laughs> alright so I will show us these senses so that we can know it and you can know its operation because that's your passageway into the realm of understanding when those senses are mobilized, it means it's an invitation. It's a summon for you to cross beyond your natural senses and to learn things that cannot be taught. Those are the weapons that spiritual people use on earth that can part the Red Sea of the economy. first sense if this is the time then uh, I think I need to stop I'm, I'm seeing one something that looks like the time <laughs> okay all right give me John chapter 13 
I'll show you the first sense, show you the second sense. We'll stop. I'll continue tomorrow. I'll show you the third and the fourth before I go into the message of tomorrow. We'll finish this one tomorrow morning. Then we'll go into the message of tomorrow. The message of tomorrow is prophetic because I expect that you now know how the senses work. So I will take you to the realm, that realm that we've been talking about. We'll begin to operate there to show you the pillars that hold the civilization of that realm. Your life should not operate anything short of what you will see tomorrow. It's from these new eyes and these new lenses that it makes available to us that we can judge things. We can know that this nation is dying. We can know that that one is springing forth like a tender plant. Oh my God. Your judgment will change. Your perspective will change. Your worldview will change because the spirit of the kingdom of God has found its way into your heart. Oh, you will no longer judge after the sight of the eyes or the hearing of the ears. Your scepter will become righteousness and with it you will war and conquer kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Hallelujah. So I'm in John chapter 13 now. He said, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew, can you underline knew, knew, that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing, underline knowing, that his father had given all things into his hands, Jesus, knowing that he was come from God, Jesus, knowing that he went to God. So your first spiritual sense is what we call the knowing of revelation. He knew that his hour had come. He did not know because he attended the University of Johannesburg. It was the knowing of revelation. That's one, that's one aspect of your spiritual sense. He knew that he was come from God. He knew that his father has given all things into his hands. He knew that he was going back to God. You cannot break a man that knows. It doesn't matter how long you torture him, persecute him, put him under pressure. He knows. When you know something by the Spirit, it becomes as much a part of you as your own beating heart. 